Ant Eater's Mystery Vacation by Doug Cushman. Ant Eater Rise the Fairy. Ant Eater, Aunt Eater, the Ant Eater was going away on vacation. You are taking a lot of books with you, said Mr. Chumpley, her neighbor. I love mysteries, said Aunt Eater. All I want to do is relax and read. We must hurry or you will miss the fairy, said Mr. Chumley. This is the, they're going on a ferry. The ferry was waiting at the dock. Ding, ding, the captain rang the bell. All aboard, he cried. The ferry to the Hotel Bathwater is about to leave. Aunt Eater found a seat and opened her book. The waves were high. The ferry swayed back and forth. Suddenly, a big wave hit the ferry. Whoosh! Crash! Everyone looked sick. All except Aunt Eater. What a fun ride, she said, but it is hard to read my mystery. Just then, the first mate rushed on deck. Has anyone seen the captain? He cried. I can't find him anywhere. It's, it means one of the passenger, the first mate, one of the passenger noticed that the, that the captain is not here. All the passengers just moan. <clears throat> Moan is a low sound that you make. It means that you're not happy. This sounds like a mystery, said Aunt Eater. I will help you find the captain. Aunt Eater and the first mate searched the whole boat. They looked on the upper deck. They looked on the lower deck. <clears throat> they looked in the engine room. They even looked in the lifeboats. They could not find the captain anywhere. We will be landing soon, said the first mate. I must lower the anchor. What do you notice? Stop, a voice cried. Do not lower the anchor. That sounds like the captain, cried the first mate. Aunt Eater rushed to the railing. The first mate ran to get a rope. The first mate pulled the captain back on deck. What happened? asked Aunt Eater. A big wave knocked me overboard, said the captain. Thank you for saving me. Aunt Eater, would you like to ring the bell? We are about to reach the shore, said the captain. Oh, yes, <clears throat> said Aunt Eater. What an exciting way to begin my vacation. Ding, ding, all ashore, cried Aunt Eater. Aunt Eater follows a sweater. Aunt Eater checked into the hotel bathwater. We are happy to see you again, said the hotel detective, Mr. Bundy. It is good to be back, said Aunt Eater. Shiny, shiny, squawk, pat. The Minad Bird. No, no, said Aunt Eater. Do not take the buttons off my sweater. Here is a nice shiny nickel. The bellhop took Aunt Eater's bag to her room. Aunt Eater sat down and opened her book. But she was so tired from her trip, she fell asleep. She dreamed she was a great detective. She followed a dark figure who loved giant footprints. The figure reached out its bony hands. Help, help, cried a voice. Aunt Eater woke up. She heard the cry again. Someone is in trouble, she said. Aunt Eater ran out into the hallway. 
Someone stole my diamond ring, cried a woman in a green dress. I went into the bathroom to powder my snout. She put powder on her, her nose. When I came out, my ring was gone. It was right there on the table. I will call Mr. Bundy, said Aunt Eater. He will solve your mystery. When Mr. Bundy came, he asked what happened. Miss Wainscott, someone stole my ring, cried Miss Wainscott. Many things have been missing at the hotel lately, said Mr. Bundy. But we have no clues. Who can the thief be? This is a real mystery, said Aunt Eater. I will get my sweater and help you look for clues. Aunt Eater went to her room to get her sweater, but her sweater was gone. Goodness, she said. Now I am missing something. She saw a piece of yarn on the windowsill. Oh my, my sweater has come undone. Aunt Eater cried, maybe if I follow the yarn, it will lead me to the thief. She followed the yarn down to the lake, past the bench, around a tree, into the garden, and there was Pat, the minor bird. Next to him were many shiny things, paper clips, nickels, big silver buttons, a silver pin, and a diamond ring. So you are the thief, <clears throat> said Aunt Eater. Shiny, shiny, pack squat. Aunt Eater took everything to the hotel. You found my ring, cried Miss Wainscott. Well, it looks like you solved the mystery, said Mr. Bundy. Thank you, said Aunt Eater. Now I'm going to my room to try to read my books. The next morning, Aunt Eater tastes some soup. Aunt Eater took a walk in the garden. She stopped near a bench. This is a lovely spot to read my mystery, she said. Then she saw a package on the bench. What could this be? she asked. There it is, cried a voice. Hello, Professor Slagbottom, said Aunt Eater. Is this your package? Yes, said the professor. I am so forgetful. In this package is the leg bone of the rare Swinesaurus, he said. This is a prize bone in my dinosaur collection. So, in this bag, in this bag, in this package, the professor said that there should be a, a dinosaur bone. Here you are, said Aunt Eater. Thank you, said Professor Slidebottom. I must be off. Aunt Eater opened her book and began to read her mystery. Just as Aunt Eater finished chapter four, Professor Slagbottom ran back into the garden. It's gone, it's gone, he cried. What is gone, said Aunt Eater. My bone, my rare bone, said the professor. I cannot find it. This is a mystery, said Aunt Eater. Let's think, where did you go this morning? Hmm, said Professor Slagbottom. First I went to breakfast. Then I went into the garden and down to the lake. Then I went to the kitchen. Then I went back to my room. We will look in the kitchen first, said Aunt Eater. Have some soup, said Cook. Aunt Eater took a sip of the soup. I do not want to complain, she said, but this soup is awful. It is the worst soup I have ever tasted, said the professor. Oh dear, said the cook. It must be the soup bone. It was very big. Let me see the bone, said Aunt Eater. Cook took the lid off the soup pot. That is my bone, cried the professor. I am so forgetful. I must have left it in the kitchen. A bone is a bone, said Cook. Professor Slagbottom, said Aunt Eater. I think you have made another discovery. What is that? asked the professor. That dinosaur bones do not make good soup, said Aunt Eater. Aunt Eater finds an ending. After lunch, 
Aunt Ida was at the lake. She was reading her book. When she looked up, she saw a strange woman sneak up to the back door. She had a notebook in her hand. Hmm, said Aunt Ida. She looks like someone from one of my mystery books. Aunt Ida followed her. Aunt Ida saw a piece of paper fall out of the woman's notebook. Aunt Ida picked it up and read it. My goodness," said Aunt Ida. "She is a thief. Maybe I can find the painting and take it to Mr. Bundy." So now you know my story. I was the one who stole the famous painting, still life with cabbage and French fries. I hid it with the dinner plates at the hotel. So the note says that. This person stole the famous painting. Aunt Ida raced into the kitchen and looked inside every cupboard. She even looked in the drawers, and inside the pantry, there was no painting. Mister Bundy came into the kitchen. "What are you looking for?" he asked. Aunt Ida told him all about the strange woman, strange woman, and showed him the paper. We must find her," Mr. Bundy said. Aunt Ida took Mr. Bundy to the back door. "This is where I saw her," said Aunt Ida. "This door goes into the hotel library," said Mr. Bundy. Suddenly, they heard crash. They ran into the library. Books were everywhere. In the middle of the room was the strange woman. "I can't find my ending," the woman cried. "Ending?" Said Mister. Asked Mister. Bundy. I came to the hotel to finish my new story. Said the woman. And now I have lost the ending. Is this it? Asked Aunt Ida. Yes. Cried the woman. Thank you. So this piece of paper is the ending of a story that she's writing. It's not that she she stole the painting. It's part of her story. Suddenly, Aunt Ida said, "I know who you are. You are Edna Herring, the famous mystery writer. You are my favorite author. I have been trying to finish one of your books since I arrived at the hotel. I love mysteries. So do I," said Miss Herring. So it's a good thing that Aunt Ida gets to meet her favorite author. Aunt Ida has solved two mysteries. Since she came here," said Mister Bundy. "You have," said Miss Heron. "You must tell me all about them. Let's order some tea and talk about mysteries. That is a lovely idea," said Aunt Eater. So now that they know each other, the author wants to have tea with Aunt Eater so they can talk about mysteries. And that is what they did. The end.